Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This video is a quick guide on how to set up the Xbox emulator CXBX Reloaded. This is a pretty simple emulator to get up and running so there isn't too much to cover, but we'll go over some things that you may find useful such as resolution scaling, basic network configuration, installing a dashboard, and even how to uncap the frame rate in certain games. System requirements are pretty basic, but it's worth mentioning that some games can be fairly demanding, and your mileage will vary mostly based on your CPU. As far as operating systems go, the 64-bit version of Windows 7 or later is required, and 32-bit operating systems are not supported. The simulator does work on Linux with Wine as well, and the setup is pretty similar, but this guide is focused on Windows. As for hardware, you'll also need a GPU that supports DirectRD 9.0C with Pixel Shader Model 2.X and Vertex Shader Model 3.0. Most hardware from the last decade should support this, but again your mileage will vary in terms of how well games will actually run. I also don't recommend running this emulator from a network location. I usually keep my emulators and games on my NAS, but this seems to cause certain games to crash or not boot altogether. And with that out of the way, there are a couple of things to install before we get to the emulator itself, and you can find links to everything that's required in the description below. First you'll want to make sure that you've got the 32-bit Microsoft Visual C++ 2019 redistributable, which is required in order to use the emulator. You'll also need to install NPCAP if you want to use network emulation for system link or LAN play, but it's not required in order to use the emulator. If you do install it, make sure to check the box that says Install NPCAP in WinPCAP API Compatible Mode. Also keep in mind that you will need to be connected through Ethernet to use networking, and you'll also need a valid keys.bin file dumped from your console if you want to connect to an original Xbox through Xlink Kai. Last of all, it's also recommended that you install an Xbox dashboard. It's not technically required for this emulator to work, but it will be required for Xbox Live functionality and it does seem to be required for a handful of games. We'll go over where to put the dashboard files in just a bit, but you'll have to obtain them yourself since I can't distribute them. Once you're all set, head to the CXBX Reloaded website and click the Download Now button to be taken to the Build History page, and then download the most recent build on the list. While you're here, it's also worth checking out the compatibility list if you're wondering how certain games run. Once you've got the emulator downloaded, right-click on the zipped folder and extract the contents to a location of your choice. Then head into that new folder and launch cxbx.exe. You'll be asked if you want to use the program in portable mode, and I recommend doing so to keep everything contained in one place, otherwise some of the folders we'll be working with in a bit will be located in your user directory on your C drive. Once you've made your choice, you'll be at CXBX Reloaded's main menu, and the first thing we want to do is configure a controller by going up to Settings, and then Configure Input. Click on the drop-down menu next to Port 1, and select either of the gamepads here, and then click on Configure. Click on the Device drop-down menu, and select the controller that you're using from the list. If you don't see it here, make sure that your controller is connected, and hit the Refresh button. If you're using a keyboard or an Xbox controller, you can hit the default bindings button to automatically map your controls. Otherwise you can map out your controls by simply clicking on one of the empty fields and pressing the corresponding button on your controller. If you mess up, just right click in the field and that will clear it out. If you're using mouse input for a light gun game like Virtua Cop 3, then you'll want to map the mouse movement to the left stick like normal, but once you have it mapped, hold the shift key and right click on the field so that it says cursor instead of axis. Doing this will prevent the crosshair from recentering itself automatically. Once you're done mapping your controls, give the controller profile a name, save it, and close out of this window. You can repeat the process for however many controllers you'd like to have connected, and the same process also applies to using the Steel Battalion controller or the arcade joystick. Back on the main screen, head to settings again, and this time into video. You shouldn't need to worry much about these first two fields, just make sure that the correct graphics device is selected in the Display Adapter field and that you're using the Hardware Accelerated mode in the Device field. In the Display Resolution field, just decide what size you want the window to be from the drop-down menu. The maximum resolution will be capped at whatever you select here, whether you're in windowed or full screen mode, so I recommend setting this to match your monitor. 
You can upscale games by changing the render resolution from the drop-down menu here, but just keep it within the limits of your GPU. Below this, you can select exclusive full screen if you only want to run games in full screen. Otherwise, you can just press F10 to toggle between windowed and full screen mode while in game. If you're having issues with screen tearing, you can enable VSync here. Pressing F9 while using CXBX Reloaded will lift the frame limit of some games, but the frame rate will be limited to whatever is selected in the display resolution field if VSync is enabled, so just keep that in mind. Enabling Maintain Aspect Ratio will put up black bars on the side of the screen so that games will render in their original 4x3 resolution. Disabling it will allow the image to stretch across the entire screen. This can be a bit ugly in some games, but thankfully we can enable proper widescreen support elsewhere. We do need to load up a game first in order to do this though, so I'll circle back to this in just a bit. If you want to use networking, just go to Configure Network in the Settings tab and select your network adapter from the drop-down menu here. Again, you do need to be connected through Ethernet in order for this to work, and you'll also need a valid keys.bin file if you want to connect to an Xbox. There are also a couple of hacks in the Settings tab that are worth knowing about, although I don't recommend using them regularly. The first is a speed hack which allows the Xbox threads to run on all cores. This can improve performance, but it's pretty unstable and causes the emulator to crash often. The second is the Disable Pixel Shaders hack, which can fix graphical issues and black screens in some games, although it breaks most games. There's still a few things left to configure, but we'll need to boot up a game in order for the emulator to generate the files that we need. To do this, just boot up CXBX Reloaded, and go to File, and open XBE, and select your game's default.xbe file. Alternatively, you can just drag the XBE file into the emulator. If your games are in the ISO format, you can use the tool linked in the description to unpack them. Once your game is loaded into the emulator, just press F5 to boot it up and start playing. There are a couple of useful hotkeys once you're in-game. For example, F1 will open the I am GUI overlay where you can enable the FPS counter. Again, you can also uncap the frame rate in some games by pressing F9. This doesn't work in every game, and some things may be sped up in others, but quite a few titles such as Mech Assault, Max Payne 2, and Dark Summit can be played at well over their original frame rates with the press of a button, as long as you have the hardware to pull it off. Alright, now that we've booted a game, the emulator has created an eprom.bin file, which means that we can enable proper widescreen support. To do this, make sure that Maintain Aspect Ratio is disabled in your video settings, and then go up to Settings, and into Config EEPROM. All you need to do is flip the video settings from Normal to Widescreen, and games which support widescreen will render to the full screen without being stretched out. The other thing that we can do now that we've booted a game is install a dashboard. I know that sounds backwards, but we needed to boot a game to generate some folders first. Again, this isn't necessary for regular use, but it does seem to affect a few games, and it will be useful later. Back in your CXBX Reloaded directory, open up the MU Disk folder, and then head into Partition 2. Just place your dashboard files in this folder like you see here, and that's it, your dashboard is installed. You can boot into the dashboard by pressing F7 in CXBX Reloaded, or just by going up to File, and Open Dashboard. Just keep in mind that not all dashboards are supported at this time. I use 4920 which I believe is the most recent dashboard that works, but you can refer to the compatibility list in the description for more information. And that should be just about everything that you need to know to get CXBX Reloaded up and running. If you have any questions, drop a comment below or head over to the CXBX Reloaded Discord server. If you found this video helpful, be sure to get subscribed to my channel for more tutorials and emulation updates. Otherwise thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.